Hello everyone, my name is Maciej Nowak and welcome to the Awesome to Know podcast where we discuss all things WordPress. My today's guest is James Baldacchino, who has been working in marketing for already 14 years. In this episode, we are going deep into the strategy field and marketing strategy in particular. We discuss common mistakes when thinking about strategy and how to do better. We also discuss launching new service lines and tackle the pricing dilemma. If you don't want to miss new episodes and keep learning about similar topics as today, subscribe to the Awesome to Know newsletter at awesomestudio.com slash newsletter. This is osomstudio.com slash newsletter. If you watch this on YouTube, give us a thumb and subscribe to the channel. This means a world to us. Without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with James Baldacchino. Hey everyone, it's good to have you here. We're glad you decided to tune in for this episode of the Awesome to Know podcast. Hi, James. Hi, Maciej. Hi, great, great, to, great to have you on the podcast. Uh, thank you very much for making the time. And I would like to go straight into, you know, questioning you, if I may say so. So what's a strategy that you are seeing over and over and is bringing better results instead of good? But it's, you know, over and over used by different people, different companies. And it's the same mistake always. And again. Okay, so firstly, thank you for uh, for the invitation. It's it's a pleasure. It was a pleasure meeting you, and it's a pleasure having this conversation with you. And you went immediately for the heart of the <laughs> exactly, of the yeah, to, um, well, yeah, to to <laughs> keep things going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's start from there that's a that's a good place to start what's the best strategy it's the it's the meat uh, you, you you skipped you skipped the 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 uh, first plate you went immediately for the main plate so yeah, yeah. The we best can, we can get back see, later part, then. yeah <laughs> the best strategy we see particularly for for uh, wordpress products or digital products in general is always going to be seo content uh, it rarely isn't the the best strategy to apply there are certain scenarios where certain clients seo um, content isn't necessarily the best thing they can do to get uh, their target clients but if in general if you have a digital product which has a relatively wide reach and by wide reach i mean hundreds of sales a year okay then you should definitely be doing seo content um uh, seo content takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and we can dive into quite a lot of detail there it takes a long time to pay off but it's also the one channel which consistently brings great results if you are doing it correctly in the long term there's there's a lot of ifs and buts because um you either do it well or it's better not to do it because you're not going to get anything out of it except frustration mm, okay so, but 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 you answered the question which I didn't yet ask, which is a, what's a good strategy, and I'm really interested in what you are seeing in you know in in the companies that the company is doing, which is a very bad strategy. But it's is, but it happens over and like in in many different places. Like so, I, I'm really interested. What is the anti anti pattern? What you are what you see, and you can have a look at it, and you immediately see this is bad move, bad choice, an error, if I may say so. Is there anything that, you know, that's, ro 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 yeah, yeah, like rolling pattern, you, you see? Uh, let me take a couple of steps back before I get to that question. I'm going to answer that question, but first, let's look at the strategy from, from the top. Problem number one is if you don't have a strategy. So if you are, this is pretty normal, especially with startups or with small companies that they don't afford the marketer full time. So they just try and do everything and they just, I don't know, do Google ads. There, There's a million things you can be doing to do marketing. So problem number one is if you don't have a strategy. Problem number two, and this is these are very related, is if you try and do every, everything at once. So you do a strategy, but the strategy tells you or you decide that your strategy is to do everything at once. So you're going to do six, seven, eight, nine, ten channels all at one go. That is also a huge problem, especially 
if you are starting up, if you are small and you don't have resources, which is a very common problem, um, trying to do everything means you will do, it's like spreading butter. You are trying to hit uh, a lot of things and you are probably not doing any of them right. So to answer the question of, of main problems, and we'll get to the main problems with SEO content, first you have to avoid those two big pitfalls and those two big pitfalls are are usually where where it starts um uh, where it starts breaking apart another problem is doing nothing <laughs> and we see this with wordpress with wordpress um uh, wordpress companies in the old wordpress and 10 years ago ish wordpress was a very different environment it was always growing. It was always exciting. Competition was different. The whole scenario was very different. So it was relatively easy to build a great product and you would have good sales from it and you would have good feedback, et cetera, et cetera. That, like every other industry in the world, that honeymoon period is over. You must be doing something to push that product. And do we know it? Because people who have had years and years of successful um, sales by doing and still did nothing have felt the pinch in the re in recent years, have started answering, have started asking, why have I suddenly slowed down? Why has my growth suddenly stopped? The answer is so have a strategy, don't do everything, don't do nothing. <laughs> The best thing you can do is pick one, two, maximum three things, depending on your on on your resources, and focus just just on those. Once you are happy that you are tackling those incredibly well and that you know exactly what you're doing and that you know exactly what results you're getting, then you decide to either continue them or drop them and move on to something else. So that's from a overall strategy point of view. I don't know what you think about. It. Yeah, this uh, this is a great start to unpack this even more. So, but 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 I also want to ask you. You know, there are many books. You know, on strategy. And if you ask an average, let's say, an average owner or uh, an average agency, let's say, like, um, what what's your strategy? Or what's your marketing strategy? I bet that if they, you know, you know, if they don't, if if they do nothing, they will know. But if they do anything, they will say, I don't know, we run ads. And I have a feeling okay. that this is, you know, on, on an execution level, not on a strategy level. So where does this 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 boundary lies between strategy and executing the strategy? How how should we think about this? That's a great question. One of the my background is, is is coming from other industries as well. And it is even more common in other industries, just to just to, to, to rest assured, even more common for marketers or uh, or people who run companies to confuse advertising with marketing. Advertising is a subset of marketing. And because you're advertising doesn't mean you're doing marketing. And because you're advertising doesn't mean you're doing marketing right. So you mentioned you mentioned uh, advertising as as one of the common problems and that is a common problem that people think that since they are pushing out ads facebook ads google ads whatever that's it job done but i'm doing ads why am i not getting you know so that's 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 that that's already a problem in itself but your question is about the difference between strategy and execution execution must follow strategy but the point is my favorite analogy for this is imagine you are going on a hike and you have no map whether that's google maps or a paper map is irrelevant for this analogy but you are going on a hike in a place you've never been to before with no idea what you should be doing seeing or going where you should be going and you have no map no map equals no strategy without a strategy you have no idea where you want to go you have no idea where you what where you're um aiming to 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 try and achieve you might not get there but at least you have no idea what direction you should take to to get to those places you have no idea if you're missing out on something you might walk 
passed something <laughs> and have no idea that you missed it. This is the, the exact same difference between a strategy and, uh, and its execution. A strategy sets out your map, your route, it gives you also gives you things you should look out for to understand whether you're in the right track, exactly like a map. So I want to pass through here, and I, if I see that, I will turn right. A strategy says the same thing. I want to try this channel, and if I see results, I will continue working on it, for example. Or my target is to have this uh, amount of growth, and I'm going to try and take this road to get there. If I don't deliver that, then I'm going to pick a different road, sit down again, do another update to my strategy, and go in a different direction. So the difference between a strategy and an execution is you can execute all the hell you, you can start running <laughs> immediately, if you like. But if you have no idea where you're running to, then, then you're wasting your time, your resources, your energy, your everything. So this is the key difference between a, a strategy and, and its execution. So, so it even starts. Um, so this starts even a little bit earlier with setting the goals, because uh, strategy should help you reach, reach those goals. And this is also, uh, I think, problematic because to understand where are you going, what do you want in life, and you know, you know, business owners want to do something in life. They are then starting the companies. You know, this is the vehicle of achieving their their personal goals through through you know business means, let's say. And then you have this business and you want to take this business somewhere. And this is also a difficult question for most owners. And uh, and for, I mean, for teams, it's a little bit different because someone has to dictate where the company is going. If the company is big enough, there it has teams for example marketing team for example but for smaller organizations it's like the management does a lot of stuff on their own and has to grow the business dictate the goals and so on so this is very difficult because the less people the more they have to do and this is easy to lose the goal from from your from your horizon so uh, how are you thinking about defining where do you want to go with the business itself? Because the strategy then has to execute, like, like as you mentioned, it's a plan of reaching this goal, but you have to know where are you going, what's your goal then? That's, uh, that's, that's also part of, part of the discussion we have with, with clients. Um, in my career in marketing over the last uh, 14, 15 years I've worked in marketing, the most common across all industries, across all types of clients I've worked with, um, the most common answer to what you want to achieve is growth, <laughs> which says everything, but says nothing at the same time. We all want to achieve growth, of course, but an answer to, to, to how, how you should approach it is, first of all, you really, really, really need to define what you understand by growth. What for for you uh, just setting a stupid goal of i want to grow by 20 times in a year uh, when you know that there isn't when you understand that what you're doing is probably not possible that that achieves nothing that is an, an intangible goal which you cannot which you cannot measure which you cannot get to so first of all we really really need to understand why why well start with asking why why are you doing what you're doing so as you said you're a small business why why are you interested in what you're doing many times the question is because i like it because i like for example with wordpress plugins um i like i, I wrote this i was doing something and i thought this was a great idea i like it i have no idea about marketing i have no idea what i should do uh, i have no idea how fast it will grow or where it will go so what should i do the answer to that is at least start setting goals you can measure okay if you have no idea how big it can get or how small it, it can remain start setting things um, you can measure against about where you would like to be and these can be tangible things like you can say things like uh, i would like that in a year my plugin grows enough for me to be full time on it if you're just starting up as a side project for example um or in two years just set an ambition 
okay? And then measure each and every month accord and according to the strategy you're implementing on whether you are getting towards that goal. It might be that in the middle of the year you say, okay, this doesn't look achievable. Or the opposite might also be true. We had a, we had clients who, who went in a year who doubled in size as a team because they suddenly realized that, that they were doing their strategy right and their plugin was growing faster than, than they expected. And that's that's great. So if you have no idea at the very, very beginning, set a goal which is which you can hook on to something else. At, at first, okay, to an ambition you have. Over time, it will become much easier to set goals. Why? Because you will start understanding much more about the potential of what you're creating. So it will suddenly become much more realistic to say, okay, I managed to deliver 50% growth last year, but that was because I was starting up. I think it is probably realistic to think that we should at least deliver 30% next year. Now, how do we get there? And that's where the strategy comes in. Um, just to give an example, of course, I'm just throwing numbers here. So it's only at the very, very beginning that it's sometimes difficult to, to understand your goal. One crucial thing which latches on to this question, which isn't exactly the answer to this question, but I hope I've tackled the answer there, but it's worth mentioning because they're very related, is understanding who you are targeting, who is your customer and what do they want? That is something which is missing from a lot and a lot of companies, not just WordPress, across <laughs> across many industries. Uh, and the worst answer you can give any marketer is a marketer who asks everyone. you, who is your target client? And they tell you everyone. That's exactly it, precisely. Everyone, everyone can use it. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I, so... Uh, the more targeted you are, the more you understand who your clients are, the better you can do, the better you can grow, the, the more you can sell, the more you can understand what your clients actually want, the more you can understand where your product should actually go, the more it's it's just happiness all around. The more you can understand actually how big your market is, because you might realize that your target market is a very specific type of people, which is it doesn't grow a lot. And that's fine because then you look at different ways of making revenue, for example. Um, but understanding your audience is crucial to everything in your business. So uh, the most important thing any startup can do in the first year is work extremely hard to understand who the hell is buying it and why. Mm -hmm. All right. And th this is, I think... Truly, what uh, what people people are missing, and there is like a ton of content on the internet about you know uh, about growth or sales. You know, everyone starts with this. You have to know who are you targeting and how. What are the consequences? You know, of not doing this right, because you know, every, it's like. Every, everyone knows you should be eating vegetables and no one eats vegetables because no one likes vegetables. Everyone goes straight to... I, I'm generalizing, but you know what I mean. It's it's painful yeah, yeah, <laughs> to eat vegetables. <laughs> it's health, uh, like um, very healthy. And this is always a fight, you know. Do, oh, let's take this one more client. doesn't fit our, our area of expertise, but... Maybe let's start another area of expertise, and now you are diluting your 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 expertise. So, what else can can go wrong if you are doing too much uh, at once? You know, with too many people. Everything <laughs> is the answer. So, by at first when you're starting up, it's okay to throw a lot of things at the wall and see what sticks. That's normal. You're figuring out what sticks and you're not sure and you're trying everything and to see what happens. But once you understand what's working, stick to that. The, the, the answer to not knowing who you're targeting and why they are buying it is that you will end up picking what to do with your product just depending on your mood or whoever owns oh, okay. the product's mood or depending on the team. Um, you will hear one client give you one piece of feedback and you will say, oh my God, that's an incredible idea and you will run with it. And if you hear one client, 
that's usually never enough. Sometimes ideas are good, mind you, but but uh, one client is never enough. You are probably losing money if you don't know who you are targeting. Um, the reason you are probably losing money is because if you don't know who, who you're selling to, you don't know how much they are willing to pay for it. And this is a common problem. Um, if, if you don't know what the value of what you are selling is to the people you are selling it to, there is a very strong chance that you are losing money. Um, so yeah, the answer is if you don't know who you're selling to and why they are buying it, why are they buying it? Why are they interested in the product? Then you are honestly wasting your time and resources and you are probably losing money and it is not a long-term plan for, for any business. The first couple of months is fine. Try things, see what works, understand, fine. That's normal. But as soon as you see a pattern, as soon as you say, hey, something is working, then dive in. Why is this working? What's going on? Why do they like this? What am I doing right? Okay, what what do I do to keep going in this direction? So, um, and also remember that growth isn't always necessarily in one specific direction. Understanding a client might also help you understand what else they need connected to your product. So it's not necessarily I want 10 of the same customer. Sometimes it's if you really understand what your customer needs, you might realize that your customer also needs something which is not available and which is within your expertise and with, which connects to your business. And you can suddenly create a new area of revenue for your own business. We tend to think that brain-wise, we tend to think that growth is just multiplying your sales of the same thing. Whereas in reality, growth of a business can come sideways, can come in many different directions. But it all stems from understanding who you're speaking to, from understanding who you're targeting. Mm -hmm. And you can also think about this in a way that you are going deep or you are going wide. So you can go with more expertise, tougher problems from the given sectors area than you know technology and, and and you are narrowing this down and being very very deep and specialized in one particular thing or you can go a little bit wider and do many different like you can be a headless expert for example or you can be a agency doing f full full services uh, something like this like with marketing websites you know ads video like uh, it's called 360 Agency, I think something like this, you know, yeah, yeah they do everything. And, and you, you cannot have the same expertise as from the experts. So um, how does this, you know, translate, let's say, into strategy? Because it can, uh, you know, it's those are totally, di totally different worlds uh, in terms of um, attracting uh, clients. This is a this is a, a great a great argument about how far and wide and what what you, what you should do and how how much you should um, uh, expand so to speak. I especially if you're a startup if you're small if you're start, still young and small teams or even on your own um, the more you manage to focus the more you manage to zoom in the more you'll manage to actually um, uh, have expertise the the more you'll manage to find areas of growth in my strong belief for the same reason as as what we started that if you try and do everything at once you will probably do nothing um right unfortunately so so uh, with marketing strategy um uh, i believe that the same applies like for example i work at ellipsis and at ellipsis we specialize um, on strategy, on giving strategic advice and on helping people with their marketing strategies. But crucially, from an executional point of view, we only focus on SEO content. Um, we do not, if we have clients who ask us for help with ads, for example, we have clients who help ask us for help with other channels, but we, we do not execute um, uh, most of them, we execute SEO content and we have focused on making that process extremely good to deliver very good results for our um, clients because we want to make sure that we get that one thing really right. So we're, we're pretty open with people saying, look, this is not our area of expertise. If you come to us telling us, can 
uh, asking us if we can help you with that. That's 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 fine. And does that mean we have lost some revenue because some clients would have paid us to do it? Yes. But was that right for the business? Probably not. Um, uh, so uh, so uh, understanding why you're picking that direction and then having a plan of what you want to do with that is is, is is just the most important thing, really. I don't know if that answers your question. All right, James. So when would be a great moment to start a second line of business? If you are, you know, you, you have expertise in one thing. So, you know, I, I'm also thinking this from the perspective, should I be doing what I'm doing since it is going in the right direction? And when do you know if it is something that stopped working because the environment changed? or you, you saturated the market with your service and this is the right moment to launch a new service line because this can ruin your first very well working, you know, core business with launching new service because this is new yeah. thing, you know, you can lose reputation. A lot of things can go wrong. So how, how to decide, how to yeah. think about making this decision? What has to be known to make this decision? That's an excellent question. Um, so first of all, Spreading your risk is always a good idea. So spreading your risk in a manageable way and not only having one thing, one product which does one thing and doing that for a very, 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 very long time is is probably not a great idea for the long term. Now, I know I just said focusing is important, so I don't want to sound like I'm going against what I just said. But what is crucial in what you ask there is when you understand when is the right time to move into a second or a third line of business? And that's exactly the mentality which which you should have as a business owner. The mentality should be, okay, recognizing that when things are going well, so the answer is when things are going well with a business and things are really at, at a good pace and you know how things are moving and you know you have a team which is moving things in the right direction and you can see steady growth, things are going well. At that moment, if you do your homework and you understand your customers really, really well, that could be a great moment to understand what else you should be looking into. Okay, business, good business tends to bring good business with it in the sense that if you're doing things right, many times answering the question of what you should be doing next won't be that difficult, especially if you've built a business where you have a great relationship with your customers. But the answer to when is when things are going well and you are steady enough, that's the uh, that's the time to start asking, should I also be branching out? And how far should I go? Should I go very far from the core business? Should I just go sideways from the core business? Should I experiment uh, with something completely different? Don't leave it until it's until you have stagnated, because a good business will always pass through tough times. Now, whether they're in your control or not in your control is a question mark. But a good business always has good times and always has tough times. So if you start tackling spreading your risk during the tough times, you're probably late. It doesn't mean you won't manage, but it will mean it's as hard. You're going back to when you started your original business. Whereas if you do it when things are going well, you can have the comfort, you have the, the resources to actually start building a, a side um, project, business call it what you want, or a side specialization um, at the right time. That doesn't mean you have to, though. That doesn't mean you have to. So if you think that if you have a really good strategy and a really good plan on how you're going to continue delivering your goals for the next few years, then you don't need to look at that either. As long as you have a vision, the worst answer you can have is, I don't know where I see the company going in a couple of years' time. If the answer is, yeah, just remain the same, I make the same income and everything is fine. That's probably not a good answer, not because growth for growth's sake, but because knowing where you want to, what you want to achieve gives you the scope to build towards it. So, yeah, I, I think that answers the question there. Okay, and I'm thinking also about this in a way that I'm thinking about the possible scenarios with with the future of the any given business. There are only three are three scenarios. You are 
growing, which is fine. You are plateauing and you are declining. When you are declining, this is too late, probably. When you are growing, this is great. And this gives you the, uh, let's say, um, stability. You are building pro potentially safety net to start building something on the site again. Like you have a day job, you start building something on the site and then you switch to building yeah. a plugin, let's say. But if you are a company, this means a new service line, for example. If you are plateau on a plateau, it it is more difficult because, for example, it can mean that you either saturated the market, someone is taking away your business, someone, someone new, a new competitor, or uh, so there is something wrong with you or the environment, or maybe fourth option, environment changed. Um, something is, uh, market is shrinking, for example, and you're, you, you are in a plateau. So I'm thinking about this in a way that how a business owner should be thinking about making uh, his or her decision about his or her strategy for the business. Because I'm not thinking about the decision itself, but rather what should be the thought process behind making the decision. How to look at the business from from this marketing versus strategy, marketing slash strategy perspective in a way to be able to answer the question, what to do with it? This is why goals are important. This is why goals are really crucial. Um, so the answer to, to, to your question is that if you do the your if you set your goals realistically, if you set your goals in ways which you can me measure, if you set your goals in ways which you can really see a pathway to building that by doing the research on whether the market is there. You mentioned that the market might be shrinking. If you're doing your research on whether the market demand is there, then that should not be a problem, for example. Of course, things can happen which are beyond your control. But, uh, but if you're doing your homework and if you are adjusting your strategy um, at, at appropriate times, then you would be able to easily understand at which point your current business will reach a plateau. And you will be able to say, okay, if I do everything right with this business, in two years' time, I will be running a successful business, but probably it will be on, on the plateau growing very, very slowly. Whereas now it's growing at 50% a year for the sake of the argument, it will be growing at 1%, 2%, 3%, just to give an example. That immediately tells you that before you reach that, you should, without diverting resources from the master plan, you should start exploring what else you need to do. If your ambition is to grow further, and you know that that's going to plateau, and you still want to grow for it because it's also okay if you don't want to. If you just, that's, what, that's just what you want. You just want to then reach a reach a point where you just want to turn things around and you want to grow very, very slowly and just keep, keep moving in that direction. Some people set that goal and that's also fine. But if not, then you know, okay, by my projections in around two years, we will be somewhere here. So at some point, I need to make sure that in the next two years, I'm also looking, understanding my clients, understanding what they need and understanding what else I can be doing. Setting goals is crucial because without it, you will be chasing unicorns. Um, uh, you will be chasing the first ideas uh, which come along. You will be... So if, if you know what you want to achieve, going back to the map analogy, if you know what you want to achieve and where you want to go through to achieve it, that will prevent your business from melting down and uh, it will also help you go in the right direction for the long term and crucially to answer your question choose when to change direction because you're doing the homework and you're understanding what's going on one thing sometimes things are not in your control so sometimes like with with the pandemic, as we saw many businesses, I'm sure they all had projections. I'm sure they all had goals. I'm sure they all had strategies and it all went down the drain. What you need to do in a scenario which is beyond. So first of all, that was a unique scenario to be clear. Those scenarios don't happen every day. But in scenarios like that, what you need to do is be able to move fast to change your strategy and to adapt. 
we've all seen stories of companies which moved from uh, I don't know what they were producing before, but they suddenly started producing face masks or they moved from from that to hand gel production, whatever. We've seen those stories because they pivoted. And the reason they pivoted was because their businesses allowed them to, just to give examples here. Um, what they what they did right there was they were willing to sit down and say, OK, we stop on this and we move on this because otherwise we will we will we will flop. Now, those are extreme scenarios. But the point I'm trying to make is when something is beyond your control, like WordPress has moved beyond the function or has absorbed the function of your plugin. That is 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 slightly beyond your control. You need to be able to predict that in the sense of you need to be able to make sure that you are not suddenly looking at a gap in the ground. So being able to adapt your strategy is really crucial. Um, and long-term goals are important, but they also need regular, very regular revision. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm thinking also because we, we talked about the growth and is there any difference when you are looking at a small starting company or a solo entrepreneur, for example, how, how the strategy changes when the company grows? Of course, there are more people potentially when the company is bigger. So there is more room for, you know, different activities, but they are also taking up, you know, this decision energy, you know, every decision is uh, energy consumed. So I wonder how this is evolving when the company evolves as well. So let me focus specifically on marketing strategy. On marketing strategy, one common one common thing which happens when, when the company grows is that uh, companies onboard a marketer. And the worst mistake that a, com that a company which is growing can make is that if they don't know what they are looking for, Again, again, <laughs> goals. Problem, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this will be episodes about the goal so, setting. <laughs> uh, yes. So, but even employing a marketer can be problematic because if you employ, let me give you a, a very clear example. If your business thrives with SEO content and the growth should be delivered via SEO content, employing someone who is an expert in ads is a problem because that person will naturally has talents and is excellent in that direction, but that doesn't mean they fit where you should be going. Alternatively, um, uh, if you really, really need specialization in ads and you get someone who's a generalist, who understands marketing overall, but isn't a specialist in, 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 in ads in particular, that can also be a problem because you know ads are your source of revenue. And if you, when you start growing, you therefore need to lean into the direction you want to lean in. So going back to this, knowing what you want when you start growing is crucial and getting the right people to take you in that direction. Because getting the wrong people, and not because bad people, they can, they can be experts in areas which are not related to your business and that doesn't make them bad people. But makes you matching them to that role a bad decision, which can have long-term imp implications. So knowing where you want to go is crucial in more ways than one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also like what you said in a way. Um, I'm again thinking on this from different perspective. You have something that is working well for you as, as the business, SEO or ads or you know, some other form of, I don't know, uh, word marketing, you know, recommendations. And you have to diversify because, for example, you are tied to one marketing channel, which might be working for you very well, but at the same time, it's a huge risk when you cut this, cut this uh, stream, you're dead, right? <laughs> and, you know, is there any advice you can give to a business that is relying on one, one, uh, one marketing revenue? Because what you mentioned with um, hiring this ad person is 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 like mind blowing. How to think about you know? It's not service second service line. It's second marketing 
uh, you know, stream, let's say. So that's a, that's an excellent question, um, uh, and it is a very common problem that people are relying, especially in WordPress, that people rely on one channel and then usually start worrying about it when the channel stops giving the results they they, they, were, they are used to seeing. So a very common problem, for example, is people who were selling through, their, getting the main revenue through, through freemium upgrades for a very long time, and are suddenly seeing slowdowns. The answer to why they're seeing slowdowns is not something I'll discuss at length, but it's very probably because of the competition that there is and things are growing in this space and the real problem isn't freemium. Freemium isn't a problem at all in this in this analogy. The real problem is what you said. The real problem is that you are too reliant on that single channel. So, yes, diversification is important, especially on, on marketing channels. But the answer to everything is always balance and at the right time. So, if you are reliant on one channel, that to me says... Sit down and get help, get somebody to help you, get somebody to consult on what strategy you should be deploying. Apart from that, that's doing fine. But what else should you be doing? And what do you need to do so? So the uh, what we said before is it might be that you are doing ads and you have an ad specialist who does great on ads and is doing a great job and that's all doing fine but that's still one channel so my answer there would be let's look at what other channels could be working for your business and you you need to check this really depends on the business and uh, on a lot and a lot of different variables on which channel works best for your business and then you need to understand as well what you should be doing. Your ads person may not be the right person for that. And that's fine because you can keep them focused on what they're doing best. And you can look at what other solutions you need to diversify your marketing. Diversification of marketing is crucial. What's also important to, to emphasize is diversification of marketing doesn't mean do 20 channels. As we said at the beginning of this podcast, it's do one, two more try them see what works each channel has a different length of time you, you should try it seo content for example takes a lot of time but then it starts paying off um ads on the other hand you can test for a month two months and you immediately can tell whether you're getting a good return on investment or not for example and then, then they're easy to switch off so it really depends but um the crucial is grab one, two channels. So first of all, sit down, get help to, to get a marketing strategy together. That's part of what I do um, at Ellipsis. Step two is execute in the direction of those one or two channels. See what works. Give, give it the right amount of time. If it works, keep going in that direction and get more help. If you need, be, need to get somebody on board because you know it's working, that's fine. If it doesn't, move on to the next move on to something else because at least now you know that this doesn't work for your business and you know why mm -hmm. as well which is really important mm -hmm. and um, is there any like obvious difference between wordpress oriented companies and you know other com companies from other sectors even in wordpress this is this can be a plugin so a product company or a agency so providing services so i guess <laughs> you know this is different, but do you see any obvious differences? Massive ones, um, uh, but but ultimately each industry has has huge differentiation on on what type of marketing you should be doing for it. So, just to give you an example, I used to work uh, part of in part of my career. I used to work in telecommunications, and in telecommunications, the most important marketing strategy is remaining top of mind. It's a very different goal. The most important marketing goal, sorry, not strategy. Uh, the most important marketing goal is remaining top of mind for all the customers. Okay. Why? Because the way that works is you don't really think about your phone signal until it fails you. So you really need to retain top of mind. So for the moment where somebody's signal fails, they either like you more or they change to you, hopefully, so depending on the scenario, whether they're a client of yours or not. So the number one goal of 
telecommunications companies with marketing is always to remain top of mind. This is why they do a lot of advertising. This is why they 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 fire the brand big time into our uh, into our heads. There's a lot of other things that 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 they do as well, but remaining top of mind is crucial. So advertising, for example, is is critical. With WordPress, that is not true. With WordPress, it's not remaining top of mind. With WordPress, is it's making sure that you can your solution can be found for people looking for specific solutions. That's a very different uh, way of marketing. Um, doing ads, doing billboards, doing whatever is irrelevant in WordPress, of course. Um, uh, but so so yeah, crucial differences, and it all stems once again from the goals of the company and mm -hmm. understanding your customers. Yeah, and um, speaking speaking of that, um, let's imagine a situation. There is a young uh, develop WordPress developer starting his or her plugin on the side, and you know, oh, sorry, you know, uh, he or she cannot afford ser professional services. Let's say of your of your agency. What would you? advice or recommend to such a person only starting you know with, with with the project getting a little bit of attraction so it's it's used by some people but this is very early so what that person should be doing so that you know in a year or in a two years time he or she will be able to afford your services for example because of the growth so first two important pieces of homework which 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 are really really important one is make sure that you are communicating with your customers for all the reasons we just mentioned and that you are understanding what your customers want because that will give you very valuable advice in and of itself as to how you can grow plus also has the side benefit of customers recommending you to other people as well which is an excellent channel if in and of itself but one which you don't have a lot of um, control over unfortunately Two is make sure that your how you're representing your WordPress plugin, your website. Whether if you have a freemium, um, uh, if you have a freemium presence, your your description and how you how you put it together is really really focused on what people can achieve, what success people can achieve by using your product. Too many times plugin websites or, or 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 product websites say this does that but it is incredibly unclear to everybody else uh, what they can do with it as in they know it does xyz but they don't know what they can achieve with it and this is why talking to your customers and getting use cases and putting it okay so with this you can create this and it can grow your business in this way so first do the homework the homework is understand who's buying it and why and to make sure that the way you're positioning it, the way the way you're you're putting it, is really clear, simple to understand, and it reflects what what your product does. Those two done well will already help you start growing. Next step is start understanding where you're getting the sales from and whether you can get more by doing more of what you're doing basically so if they're all coming from freemium for example can i improve on the freemium channel in some ways and there are many ways you can improve on the freemium channel to get more people interested in upgrading to pro for example so start from what's working and see whether it can work better if you're on your own and you have no this is answering the question of if you're on your own and you're just trying to do your best okay if you want to go a step further then try and tackle one more channel experiment with something experiment with a channel experiment with uh, there's there's a million different solutions you could experiment with but the crucial thing is don't try and as i said at the beginning don't try and do everything so only if you have the space if you don't have the space it's better to understand your customers make sure it's positioned and and uh, described well and that the journey through your website is easy etc etc and lean into what you're doing right when you're at a level of enough growth, then consider getting help, for example, from someone who can help you understand where else you can go. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Makes sense. Makes sense. So this is this is a great advice for a young starting uh, uh, gun <laughs> or or a product. <laughs> and uh, you know, <laughs> you you mentioned freemium as well. And I wonder what is the role of pricing in all of the marketing strategy? Does it go into uh, like uh, business strategy or the place of pricing is in the marketing strategy area? Let's say. Pricing, in my view, is very much uh, a marketing uh, tool in the sense that, of course, pricing is crucial to the to the business strategy itself. But in the sense that you can get pricing so wrong that you would be ruining all your marketing anyway. And my favorite analogy um, uh, is 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 the analogy I, 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 I uh, you heard me give last time, which is uh, wine. Okay. Uh, wine, wine pricing is a wonderful thing because nobody understands what they're drinking. But if the if the price is high, then you think it's an amazing wine. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And I love giving that analogy, and it's crucial because that means purely pricing on value and not on how much it costs. You cost plus pricing is is a thing of the past. It's on what does it actually give back in value as a product. And that's why I, why I see it as a marketing tool. Because if I have an excellent product, a wonderful product, a genuinely incredible product, but I'm pricing it cheap, I might actually be telling people it's not worth it, it, it it's it's not a good quality. Because it's cheap, therefore it must not be good quality. Because people will judge you with that. So imagine a I don't know, uh, French old wine, uh, if, uh, incredible, 100 years old, whatever I'm inventing here, and you see it marked at 10 euros. Your brain will go, something is wrong with it, <laughs> whether you like it or not. And you probably won't buy it. Would you buy it if it were 100 euros? If you're not in the market, no. But the people who are in the market would, and the people who are looking for that 100-year-old wine or whatever it is, then they would consider it. And it's better to sell one to, to a good client than to sell, try and sell a hundred to, to uh, you know, 10 to 10 different clients, for example. So this is why I think pricing is so, so crucial. Um, getting back to what I, getting your product right. The, the, the mentality of if I, if I build it well, they will come is incorrect if you build it well they will come but you also need to price it well you need to position it well and if you price it wrong everything can fall off a cliff so getting your pricing right is really important and to get the pricing right you need to test just test just try just see what happens just try and raise it for example if your price has been static for more than a year <laughs> it's probable that you are starting to make a mistake. I mean, it depends on a lot of different questions, but if you haven't even tried touching your pricing in, in more than a year, look and look at it and consider whether you should be testing raising the, the price for the sake of the argument. Mm -hmm. But this is always very tricky in a sense that there is always that stress that, okay, I will raise let's say rice, because this is the stressful curve, right? Which, when I'm thinking about this, is also, you know, the other direction is also, should be also stressful when I'm lowering the prices. What will change, right? It doesn't necessarily mean they will, they, I mean, clients, they will buy, they will come, they will know that the price is lower. So the the upwards direction is always stressful the downwards is never stressful whereas it should be as well <laughs> so uh, you know how, how to fight it be, and you have to have a full funnel a full sell, sales funnel to have it uh, to be able to even test it right so it, it there has to be a certain critical mass to be able to run the test yes yes you're 100 percent right um, and it is stressful. It is very stressful when you raise the prices and you're, I, I completely agree with your statement that it actually, I think it's more stressful if you if you lower them, to be very honest. Um, because if you lower them, um, uh, you are changing your, the positioning of your product so, so, so much. 
um, that to me I get much more stressed about what uh, people will think about my product when I, when when the pro- when the prices have to go low than I do when I try raising them. Yes, you also need a critical mass to be able to 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 start testing prices. And there's nothing I can tell you which will remove the stress of uh, of test. That's just that's just the matter. That's just the truth. But what I can tell you is be patient and analyze. Look at what's happening and give it time. Okay, you cannot try change a test and then change it back in a panic with one week. What happens a lot of time is okay. This is normal. Think about your own patterns when you buy a digital product or not even not a digital product, but many times if you want to buy something, you're not always a hundred percent sure. So it's very normal for you to go to the site, look at it. Should I, shouldn't I? Let me sleep on it. Come back tomorrow. Some people for some products, depending on everything, takes one day. Some people it takes one hour. Some people it takes two weeks. Okay. Depends. So what happens when you raise the price? If I'm in that cycle of should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, and suddenly the price goes up, there's a strong probability that I will not buy it. But that's okay. But because the reason I'm not buying it is because I was considering it, but I wasn't sure. Like I came and like I was considering it, the next person will come and start their cycle. And for that person, that's the price they know. So if you are constantly changing prices, this is confusing and people are, are, are aren't are sure what's going on while they're considering uh, buying your price. And if it goes down, they they might think, you know what, I I might not buy it because I'm not sure. It, he was going to charge me double last week. So why? What, what's mm-hmm. going on? What's wrong with this? Crazy product? people so, can count on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and that's, that there's a point on, on sales there as well to be made. But um, the answer is raise a price if you're going to raise a price. And let it go. Let it go for a month. Let it go at least. My favorite is at least two months, sometimes three, depending on your product. Of course, if you can afford it. At first, you will see a dip. This is going to happen because of what I just explained. But don't panic is the answer. What you need to do is then, after that month or two, look at what happened. Look at how many units you sold, what your average order value was so how many how what what price people paid for how many how many units were bought and whether actually um you're 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 at a better place or not trust me it's very difficult for me to describe it uh because it, it varies so much depending on the product but if you do your analysis right you will suddenly understand because if you look at traffic you look at price and you look at revenue and you look at units sold and you put all that information together and you build a picture, it will suddenly become very clear whether your price test was a good idea or not. Just looking at the bottom line isn't enough of an indicator because you might have raised the price and for some reason, at that moment, interest in the product fell off, fell off a cliff. And you might blame the price. <laughs> so you need to analyze, you need to put it ev- always into context. And that's another thing. Change one thing. Don't change five things. Change the price and that's it. Don't change the product and the price and the, and the features and the tiering and the... Change one thing. Change the price so that you know whether whether the price is influencing um, what's going on or not. Because otherwise you won't be able to tell whether it was the price or whether it was the tiering or whatever it was. Yeah, you, you cannot pinpoint this to one uh, one variable that changed. This is easy for the product where you have, you know, dashboard for product versus price versus traffic, you know, revenue. And, and this is very easy for digital products, you know, very like grateful playground to, to work on the pricing with the agency, for example. So the other part of the of the WordPress community, let's say, comes from not only products, but uh, from agencies. This is much different where the sales process is longer and the bigger the project, the longer the process, the decision making process, uh, like 10 times more var- variables to take uh, into account when, when the, making the decision. Is there how how think about pricing there well that's your first of all that's extreme you're extremely right um 
it's a completely different um, way of tackling your pricing and the way of tackling your marketing strategy as an agency. My answer is, is, is a simple one. It's the value you are bringing to your clients. Um, with an agency, it is problematic if you are delivering a lot of value and you are delivering it at a low price because you might be attracting people who are interested, who are not the right fit for for uh, for what you can do and for the amount of work you you achieve so in an agency needs to be much more picky and much more strategic in what type of client it wants to attract and make sure that the pricing reflects that to use the same uh, analogy if you want a company if your type of work at a, Let's. This is the difference between a tiny agency, one, two, three people, and an agency which is much bigger and doing bigger projects. A one, two, three people agency possibly can do, I'm generalizing of course, but is interested in helping James set up a WooCommerce store for the first time. Because it's a low price and James doesn't know and it's a new client and coming in. Whereas a big agency, uh, 20 people, 30 people, whatever, who is who is focused and specialized in a particular uh, area, probably doesn't care about James as a client at that point, and not because of cruelty, but because it, it, it just doesn't fit their business model. And that's okay. So that means the pricing is wildly different because what they care about is a different business person who runs a much bigger website and wants an agency's help for example, or needs to come in from another platform, for example. So pricing really, really, really structures as as should be structured around the value your agency is bringing to your target client. As you can tell, it's always the same story. It's always the same story. The narrative is always the same. It's always who you're attracting and what value you are giving to them. So, but different parts of the the ecosystem have very different ways of looking at it. Yeah, true. Yeah, you have to find your perfect client where who, who will be happy with the level of service you are you are providing and there are clients that are not necessarily interested in like p- perfect development. They are they they will be happy with uh, something that's, you know, displaying some content that th- this is fine for them. So look be able to say no to clients you which don't fit what you want that's really really crucial business <laughs> advice be able to say no and also be able to really um say okay i made a mistake with my pricing with that client but at least i learned from it that's fine let me apply what i learned now and move move forward with the times and that's okay yeah yeah L- learning mindset is, i like this much i like this very much <laughs> yeah my Thank my favorite you. way yeah, of yeah. putting it is i en- i enjoy being wrong because that means i'm going to learn something today <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. You, you 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 have to keep it positive <laughs> you know what, what else is left <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean this of course is, i don't yeah. enjoy being wrong all the time but i like learning so so <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. I I like this spin very much, and you know, w- with this po- positive you know thing, uh, the, the the podcast comes to to the end, and I thank you very much uh, for 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 sharing all of your knowledge, and I enjoyed this conversation very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, and thank you for the invitation. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you, James, and see you around. Thanks a lot. If you like what you've just heard. Don't forget to subscribe for more episodes. On the other hand, if you've got a question we haven't answered yet, feel free to reach out to us directly. Just go to awesomestudio.com forward slash contact. Thanks for listening and see you in the next episode of the Awesome to Know podcast.